The idea of a talking animal wasn't new. Mr. Ed's trainer, Les Hilton, first pioneered a method of making animals speak in the film series, Francis the Talking Mule. How was it accepted amongst people? Like, were people shocked to see this talking horse when it first no, came out? No, no, no. Francis, like I said, was a very popular movie series. And, and people, I mean, I remember as a little kid seeing Mr. Ed and associating that with Francis, it was about the same thing to me. What happened though with the Westerns? Were they, I mean, obviously because of the stock footage not being able to be used anymore, they started to fade out? Oh, there were a lot of things that killed the Westerns. Um, of course, there was money. Uh, when you've got something like, have you ever seen the, the set for I Love Lucy? Yes. Okay, it's like in a, this big warehouse and, and here's the apartment and here's the nightclub and there's just a screen between them. Well. Imagine how cheap that is to produce compared to something like Bonanza, where you've got yeah. this big town and you've got all these horses and wagons and lots of extra people and, you so know. So it's almost now. like Mr. Ed was morphing into the modernization of not spending as much money It was money kind of a, a transition Western. piece. It really yeah. was, yes. Yeah, and, and it also uh, was a transition from movies. Uh, Arthur Lubin, I believe directed a series of movies called Francis the Talking Mule. Okay. And in Francis the Talking Mule, Chill Wills was the voice of Francis. And then you had Donald O'Connor as the, the character that's always getting in trouble because of he knows the mule can talk. And it, by the end of the movie, the mule's got to get him out of hot water. But these were films. These were these were movies, yes, these were films. And Arthur wanted to bring Francis the Talking Mule to TV. And so uh, he tried, couldn't get that done, and then he found out about the Mr. Ed books. So he, Arthur Lubin took these books and he decided to make this series out of it. How was that um, accepted when he first proposed it to the studio? Well, it was kind of odd. I, I, think, I think Mr. Ed was the, one of the only shows to ever kind of go into syndication or something before it got accepted and had sponsors. It, it was really odd. And really? I don't know all the specifics of it, but the way it got in, to being a regular sponsored show and, and had a network was just not the regular route. But then again, it wasn't the regular kind of show either. One of the most famous things that Mr. Ed's known for is his voice. Who yeah. is the man behind the voice? Well, that's a secret. Mr. Ed played himself. It says so in the credits. Well, <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> There's gotta be somebody. It was, it was Alan Rocky Lane. No, I have an idea we have to look deeper than that for our answer. I guess it is a mite uncomfortable traveling in a coach all day. Not on your life. I'm going to stay right here with you. I guess folks and horses are a lot alike. And Alan Rocky Lane uh, started out in movies in 1929. Now, he'd done uh, theater work before that. He actually was a big Western star but he didn't play in his first Western until the 1930s. Oh, really? And uh, he ended up being billed as Alan Rocky Lane because of a character's name that he had had named Rocky Lane. Um, but he also ended up taking over the Red Rider series. Oh, okay. Well, first there was Don Redberry. Don Redberry and a boy named Tommy Cook uh, were the first Red Rider and Little Beaver. A Red okay. Rider, that was a pretty big deal that's back a big, then. Yes, it was. Red Rider was like, that's like being picked to be a superhero, like yeah. Iron Man or something. The Red Rider was big. I mean, there's still the Red Rider BB guns, and we're talking back in the 30s. So why didn't they want to tie his name to the show? Well, it, it wasn't them. I, I'm convinced it was him. Oh, I okay. Mean, after you've been all this, after you've been this kind of action hero and all, I mean, for one thing, back in this era, you had TV shows that could really flop, and especially when they've got a new idea. And so, you know, he had, you know, he had reasons for that. But after it got popular, he did want his name known. Oh, so what did they do? Well, since Mr. Ed had been billed as portraying himself in the credits all this time, they didn't want to change that. So they gave him a raise, and he took the raise instead of the credit. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. I mean, the whole world knew him as Mr. Ed, mm -hmm. and if you took the magic away from it, I feel like it wouldn't have been as popular it, almost. It, it, it can take away, uh -huh. it can. Especially for the kids, I guess, you know. Mr. Ed's co-star on the show is played by Alan Young, Wilbur. 
and I know that you met Alan. What was he like? I did. I was very lucky to be able to interview him for my book, and he was just the most gracious, lovely man. And he actually wrote a book about uh, his life with Mr. Ed, and he told me some wonderful stories. Um, one of them that I really remember is he used to follow the trailer um, with Mr. Ed in it to the studio because they, they just shot over here nearby. And, and um, so he followed behind him in the morning and he said if his tail was tucked inside the trailer, it meant he was still sleepy oh. and he was going to be a bit, you know, hard to get going on the set. But if his tail was outside of the trailer and flowing in the breeze, it meant he was raring to go and, you know, he'd get out of the trailer and be prancing around. So he could always gauge his mood by, by his tail in the morning, which I thought was really sweet. What did Alan say about working with Mr. Ed? Well, he just said it was easy. He loved working with him. Um, he really, you know, just enjoyed it very much. So I think he had a great time working on set with him. You know, I don't think there were any problems or no egos of being upstaged by a horse yeah. or anything <laughs> like that. You know. You know, Alan was a very, very kind and generous, sweet man. I wanted to meet someone who really knew Mr. Ed, so I tracked down Wendy Young, the daughter of Alan Young, who played Mr. Ed's lovable owner, Wilbur Post. Wendy, your dad was Alan Young. You were the Correct. daughter of a celebrity. Correct. What was it like growing up, you know, basically? What was it like growing up with a man that talked to a horse? Yes. Uh, very crazy. Because <laughs> a horse actually talked back, you know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Dad was a very fun person. Do you remember that moment when he first got that job? I was pretty young. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember. Just before dinner, he'd be working on lines talking to himself, which was kind of strange. You're like, Dad, you're talking to yourself. You're talking like to, to yourself. What are you saying? <laughs> that had to be pretty neat, knowing your dad was going to be working with a horse. Loved horses since I was born. Mm -hmm. And out of that, Dad had to take riding lessons. He never really rode before. Oh, really? So there was a, a trainer named Red who took Dad not too far from here, just behind us, mm -hmm. to a ring. And Red put him through the paces of actually picking up a hat from the ground. Oh. He really made him work hard. And then Dad ended up getting a horse for us kids. And her name was Edwina. Oh, <laughs> was it Ed's girlfriend? It was Ed's girlfriend. And she soon turned into Minx because she, uh, Dad would get on her and she would buck. Whenever oh, no. Dad was on her, she would buck. But with me, my siblings loved us. Oh wow, that's crazy. So poor Dad had to rent another horse to ride or he would ride Ed. We'd go ride Ed. Did you ever get to meet Arthur Lubin? Oh yeah, I saw him quite a few times. He'd come to the house um, on set. He was very, I was afraid to talk to him because, you know, he was giving out orders and it was pretty focused there. And he was very nice. He was very sweet. Um, I remember Dad got along with him really well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the man has done so much. He did Francis the Talking Mule. Yeah. He did the original pilot to Mr. Ed. Um, and George Burns was actually the first producer. I don't know if you know that, but he was the original producer of the show. Oh, wow. Yeah. In fact, we were living in England then. Dad had moved us overseas because Dad was British, and he went back there to live. And then he got a uh, phone call that they wanted him back there because George Burns said nobody else would believe but Alan Young talking to a horse. Larry Keating, I knew briefly. I was really young then, and because he was, I think he only did the show for two years. It's hard for me to remember, but I remember um, my dad, mom, and I were in New York staying at the Waldorf Astoria, and Larry was in the lobby, and we went to say hi to him, and that was the last time I saw him. He died of cancer shortly after that. Wow. Tell me about Connie Hines. I'll get tears in my eyes. <laughs> um, she was a sweetheart. Really? She was a sweetheart. Yeah, she, um, she was adorable. I just remember looking up at her like, I want to grow up and be like her. <laughs> um, and I knew her later on. I knew her 15 years ago before she passed. And we used to hang out. Dad and I would have lunch with her quite frequently. Uh, she was a good gal. Yeah. Yeah, she was a good gal. Coming up on This Old Horse. I mean, I just couldn't understand. How did they get that horse to talk? You know? Oh, I know how. I thought that was magic. 